welcome to Winchester News Online. I'm Samantha Harper. In today's news, Chris Hewn, Chris over accelerating allegations. I'm helping the police and I'm sure they'll get to the bottom of that. Another day, another cut. Desperate protests to save specialist units. In sport, England's captain gives girls a chance to shine. And how a roaring stake at the Rose Bowl left the police stuffed. And make sure you don't go anywhere after the bulletin because I'm going to Southampton to take you to see an Andy Warhol exhibit. Eastleigh MP and Energy Minister Chris Hewn was questioned by police last night after claims he was asked by his then wife to take his penalty points for a speeding offence. Mr Hewn visited Winchester's Guild Hall last Friday. Andrew Giddings was there. Hello. No, I'm afraid not. Business as usual is the picture Mr Hewn tries to convey as he attends an energy saving conference in Winchester. Um, will you resign if the allegations prove to be true, Mr Hewn? And while questions follow him about accusations that he convinced his ex-wife to take responsibility for his speeding offence, he remains tight-lipped. Response to any allegations at all? Thanks. I've already uh, responded, and I'm helping the police, and I'm sure they'll get to the bottom of matters. The energy minister has occupied the number of column inches that can only come with controversy, as well as allegations that he perverted the course of justice by passing on licence points in 2003, an offence that could land him in prison if he is found guilty, a complaint about his election expenses has now been lodged as well. And although charges may never actually be brought to Mr Hume, his political career is already under pressure. Politicians can get really obsessed about, am I in the papers this week? What are they saying about, about us? How is it going? And I think sometimes that can lead to the wrong kind of decision making. You know, it, it, what has happened, if it's true, is, is a serious offence. It's not something to be taken lightly, but it's something that happened before he was elected and before he was a minister. For now, Chris Hewn has the support of the Cabinet and his party while he tries to continue with his work. But as pressure intensifies, that support may soon pass the point of no return. Andrew Giddings, Winchester News Online. More than 100 bin men are on strike in Southampton this week. The City Council faces a dilemma on how to save money and they have chosen to cut wages instead of losing employees. Julie Cordier went to speak to, down to, speak to those affected. This site could soon become common in the streets of Southampton as binmen protest against the proposed cuts to their wages. Workers earning less than £22,000 a year would face a 2% cut. Those earning more than that would see their wages reduced by 4.5%. According to Council Chief Royston Smith, the alternative to wage cuts would be 400 redundancies. I understand that you know cuts have got to be made. I'm well aware of that. But the way people need to know, Royston Smith has gone straight in hard. Every time there's a crack at the whip, the bin lads always get the full force of it. We're the ones that have to suffer it first of all. There's other ways he can make savings. He knows that. We did not want to take this action, no, but nobody can afford to lose money. This is the only action that is left to us. These bins will remain uncollected until at least next week. Southampton City Council have said that they were disappointed in the union's decision to strike, but that they will not reconsider the plan. They are, however, prepared to sit down and discuss the issue with the workers. Local residents are advised to reduce their waste as much as they can, as no one knows when the strike will end. It's Julie Cordier for Winchester News Online. The owner of a pub in the New Forest is angry at roadworks taking place outside of his business. Regular customers will have to find a different route until the work is completed this Friday. Kieran Brannigan went to speak to the landlord. A repetitive beep, the crunch of metal, concrete being ripped apart. Not sounds you would usually associate with a trip to the English countryside. For the third time in the last few years, roadworks once again blight this quiet part of the New Forest. Hampshire County Council say the resurfacing is essential, but what does it mean for businesses in the local area? I have to lay some staff off. If I don't take money, and I cannot pay staff. So this week uh, there will be at least five different staff members affected. Why couldn't it be done earlier in the year? The main road towards the pub is closed during the day. 
As a result, Reginald claims that business is down by up to 50%. He says customers don't realise that the road is open in the evening and that the council signs are confusing. In a statement to Winnell, Hampshire County Council said they appreciate that the works could cause some inconvenience, but that they have done everything they can to minimise disruption to local residents and businesses. Kieran Brannigan, Winchester News Online. Southampton City Centre saw a protest in opposition to government proposals to close a specialist heart unit. The unit at Southampton General Hospital is second best in the country. David People of Southampton took to the streets on Tuesday to protest the government's proposal to close Southampton General Hospital's specialist heart unit. The unit is renowned as one of the best in the country and over 100,000 people have signed a petition in opposition to the cuts. We understand that sometimes closures do need to be made but why close something that's taken decades to get this good and is the second best in the country? We believed we worked for an NHS that was driven by quality and clearly that's not the message that we're receiving at the moment because although we're second in the country we're still put at risk the people of Southampton have made it clear that they're not going to have their heart unit taken without a fight. The show of support here today is surely hard to ignore, but with government cuts across the board, maybe the stage for debate has been and gone. The decision regarding the future of the heart unit won't come until later in the year, so the survival of this life-saving facility still hangs in the balance. David Champion, Winchester News Online. And now over to the sport with Kieran Brannigan. What have you got for us this week, Kieran? Lots on this week, Samantha. With the football season finished, players and staff at Basingstoke took time out to celebrate what turned out to be a very busy domestic schedule. Michael Connolly was at the Camrose. Basingstoke Town are throwing their annual end of season presentation evening to award some of their best players. I've come down to see what's happening and see who the winners are. The night consisted of a meal, a raffle and speeches and the all important player awards where manager's player, player's player and most improved were up for grabs. Robert Rice scooped the manager's player, Ross Adams got the player's vote and Greg Draper the most improved after netting 24 times for the Dragons this season. The club chairman Rafi Razak couldn't make it to the event but praised the club's performances in a speech read by general manager Dave Partridge. The party went on to the small hours of the morning and they will be hoping to celebrate more next season as they look to improve and push for promotion. Michael Connolly, Winchester News Online. Eastleigh Football Club have released nine players from their first team squad. The move comes after the club announced that they are planning to turn professional. Amongst the players being released are Jason Matthews, seen here making an error against Welling. Anthony Riviere, who got the winner against in Eastleigh's 2-1 victory over Basingstoke earlier this year, has also been released. And now in other news. Following their punishment, following their punishment for poor discipline, sorry, Winchester City owner Paul McCarthy has received a huge punishment from the Hampshire FA. McCarthy has been given a 10-game touchline ban to begin at the start of next season. The 51-year-old has also received a £400 fine for bringing the game into disrepute. Now to something different. Female cricket hopefuls had the chance to meet an England international on Friday afternoon at Winchester's Twyford School. Gareth Messenger was there to tell us more. England women's cricket captain Charlotte Edwards has a busy summer ahead with games against Australia, India and New Zealand in the 2011 Quadrangular Series. Edwards was at Twyford School on Friday but is eagerly anticipating a competitive summer. Yeah, we just, we just can't, we're really looking forward to it. I think um, to, you know, when you're playing the best teams in the world, I think it's always a good, it's always a good judge for us to see where we're at. And, um, you know, we've, we've, we've picked a really strong team, so you know, we're confident if we play our best cricket we'll win. But, um, on the other hand, we know we're up against three very good teams, so we're going to have to play our absolute best to, be, to win both series. Edwards was in Winchester to continue her work for the Chance to Shine initiative alongside the Hampshire Cricket Board. She told us more about the campaign, which was launched in 2005. I'm a Chance to Shine ambassador and I have been for the last three years, so primarily my role is to get girls playing cricket. And um, I've been working with the Hampshire Cricket Board for, for this week. And it's great to come here to Twyford School, who, have been, who are a big supporter of women's cricket, and, um, and obviously coach, coach some of their, um, their, their young girls. So Twyford pupils have had their experience of international cricket. 
bus on June 23rd. Edwards will be looking to bowl over New Zealand as the women's international summer season draws closer. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. That's all the sport for this week. Back to you, Samantha. Thanks, Kieran. And finally, these pictures show the moment a police helicopter swooped over what they thought was a tiger relaxing in a field in Hedge End. It was only when the helicopter got closer that the flight team from Sussex discovered that it was actually a cuddly toy. A team of specialists were on standby at Marwell Zoo, ready with tank tranquil tranquil tranquilizers. No one has yet claimed the toy, so he's still waiting behind bars until someone steps forward to take him home. And that's all for Winnell this week, but for more award-winning news and sport, don't forget to log on to our website at winnell.co.uk. From all of us here, goodbye. Can you imagine spending 20 years of your life in prison for a crime you didn't commit? Neither could I until I got the opportunity to portray Betty Ann Waters in the film Conviction, telling the real story of how she freed her brother Kenny. Sadly, what happened to Kenny happens far more often than you might expect, but together we can stop it. Please join me in helping the Innocence Project fight injustice. Go to innocenceproject.org to make a donation and get involved. Hello, I'm Carla Thwaite and this is What's On in Winchester. In this week's show, I'm going a little bit cultured as I cover art, photography, and later on, I'm going a little bit further afield to cover a very special art exhibit. But first up... Chernobyl, which isn't really a word you'd usually associate with art, but photographer Gail Ward is making it so. This Friday is your last chance to go see her exhibit. She spent some time there, took some photos, and people have said that it's like she tells a story in her pictures. I've also heard it's quite moving, and entrance is free, so you've got no excuse. Now, I'm not the most creative of people, which is why I am incredibly grateful to the aptly named Colour Factory, who are holding various workshops about art this week. The one coming up very soon is on China painting. It's a little bit pricey at £48 for entrance, but that does include tea and coffee, and you're going to be the envy of all of your friends with all of your painted cutlery, I promise you. Over the past few weeks, I've been covering all of the events in and around Winchester for you. But now, for this final What's On before the summer, I'm going to take a little field trip to Southampton because down there, they've got a really incredible and fascinating exhibit going on about Andy Warhol. So I'm here with the lovely Ros Carter, um, Andy Warhol. I'm a huge fan, everyone's a huge fan. So please tell everyone what this exhibit has in store for them. Um, well, this is part of a. T this is one part of a two-part exhibition um, of Andy Warhol that's here in Southampton. Um, the exhibition is in two parts. So there's one part that's at Southampton City Art Gallery, and then there's one part that's here at John Hunt's Art Gallery. Um, between the two exhibitions, they span pretty much most of the things that Warhol did over his career. Lots of kind of behind-the-scenes footage. We've got some fantastic. Nice quotes Built, as well. Yeah, there's quote, famous quotes from yeah. him. Um, yeah, lots of footage made by his friends back in the like, mid 1960s of him, you know, just kind of relaxing with friends and running around with his little cine camera oh, and that nice. kind of thing. So there's lots of kind of behind the scenes stuff about Warhol. Um, and there's all sorts of things within this show and the City Art Gallery that may be unexpected that people may not know about Warhol. Well, after the interview, I could not resist. I had to have a little look around myself, and I even ended up making myself slightly at home, although I cannot guarantee you'll also get a free cup of tea with your visit. But remember, entrance is free, and the collections can be found either here at the John Hansard Gallery or, of course, at Southampton City Art Gallery. I can say from experience, this is an incredible collection, and you really should not miss out. Well, once again, that's been all from me here this week. I would say stay tuned, but instead I'm going to say have a great summer. Bye. Today, an innocent person is standing trial for a crime they did not commit. Today, an innocent person is writing for help from a prison cell. 
245 people have been exonerated by DNA testing, but researchers believe that at least 40,000 innocent people are still behind bars. For them, the answer is the Innocence Project, an organization that uses DNA technology to free those who've been wrongfully convicted of a crime. For more information about how you can support the Innocence Project, go to mylifetime.com. Hello, I'm Michael Connolly, and welcome to Sports Week Review of the Season. Finishing 11th last season, EC were looking to improve their league position with a place in the playoffs. Amy Pickering shows us what was a roller coaster season for the Spitfires. After finishing 11th in the Blue Square South last season, EC were hoping to improve their standing as they went into another year at the Silver Lake. A 3 0 win against Boreham Wood typified their solid start to the season, which saw them make a push for the playoffs. Another vital, and possibly one of the sweetest victories, was against bitter local rivals Basingstoke. Having lost 1-0 to them earlier in the season, the Ian Bear's men were quick to and take And he's over the scoring for East Lee. It's a scrappy goal, but a marvellous finish by Slabber. Jamie Slabber, who finished as the third top goalscorer in the league, with 21 goals. Hey, oh, and it's squirming through the arms of Lock, and it, is it in? The referee's given a goal and it's 2-0. Shades of Robert Green here at the camera. And a home win against St Albans shortly saw the Spitfires soaring into the playoffs. And Miss Kip, by post, has led him reason, dinked it over the keeper and made it 2-0. However, two, two successive home player. losses against top of the table Braintree and fellow playoff contenders Dover stopped their run of good form. Hogan has done well here and he's rounded Barford and he opens the scoring for Dover. What a start for the Whites. Baker's through, this could finish it. Save, but it's falling to Virgil and it's 2-0. And the points are heading Eastley back to... Eastley didn't lose heart though and hit back with an impressive win against Chelmsford City. Oh, fantastic touch there. He's left pull in. What oh, a fantastic goal by Tom Jordan. The EC skipper scores a goal that his dad Joe would have been immensely proud of in his peak. Goes in for Slabber. It's 2-0 to EC. It's a good ball in. Jordan's in there. And it's in the back of the net. And it's the new man, Mark. And a further win against Bromley couldn't take the edge of a 4-1 thrashing against Welling. Andy Pugh dinks it over the keeper. He's cleared off the line and he's tapped in the rebound and gets his second goal of the game. The ball's passed back to Matthews. He's hesitated and he's given it away. Louis Cumbers won't get an easier goal all season. An awful mistake by Eastley's number one. Ball's played to the edge of the area. Jamie Day with the control. And he's rifled it into the Their turbulent corner. season Fantastic improved after the Welling the result, but the resounding 4 0 win over Woking, sending them back into the playoff contention. However, this was short lived as the Eastley season took a turn for the worst, losing two must win games against Maidenhead and Boreham Wood. Those defeats signalled an end to what was an impressive season for the Spitfires, and Eastley missed out on the playoffs by three points but look ahead to a promising future both on and off the pitch. Basingstoke Town had an up and down season during 2009-2010, finishing 15th in the Blue Square South table. Gareth Messenger looks into what was yet another frustrating year for the Dragons. 
a solid but frustrating season for Basingstoke Town in the Blue Square South this domestic year. It's a real chance this. Southern Virtual for Dover. Slots it home. The win on cameras were first at the Camrose for the game against Dover, which despite starting badly, turned into one of the highlights of the season. Basingstoke's main talisman Greg Draper found a way back into the game for Basingstoke with this neat finish. Draper appeared to enjoy the moment and it wasn't long before he was celebrating yet again. It's Draper again, Basingstoke take the lead. But the 21 year old wasn't done yet and completed his hat trick on the stroke of half time. Would you believe it? It's 1 2 3 for Greg Draper, a superb hat trick for Basingstoke's number 10. The game finished 3 2 to the home side, but they failed to carry this momentum into their derby against Eastleigh. The slabber. And he's opened the scoring for East Lee. It's a scrappy goal, but a marvellous finish by Slava. And on loan, Reading keeper Simon Locke chose the worst possible moment to contribute to Winnell's blunder reel. Hey, oh, and it's squirmed through the arms of Locke, and it is it in? The referee's given a goal, and it's 2 0. Shades of Robert Green here at the Camrose. Matt Warner led the second half fight back for Basingstoke, but it was all in vain. Eastley running out 2-1 winners in the derby. Sam York has played in Warner here, left foot shot, and he's pulled a goal back. And the Dragons are right back in it here. Draper, though, was back amongst the goals when Town travelled to Staines. And Orlo's misjudged it, and Draper's in here. And he's lobbed Louis Wells, and Basingstoke take the lead. But typically at Basingstoke's season, they couldn't hold on to their advantage. He steps up to the level of the game. He sent Morris the long way. This was one of 12 draws for Frank Ray's men, a number of which were games that have been led by the Dragons. Basingstoke were once again guilty of this when Lewis travelled to the Camrose. Oh, an absolutely fantastic finish from Pratt. Although the game will largely be remembered for this wonder goal by David Pratt. A real stunner by the big forward, but Basingstoke were once again left to rue their inability to hold on to a lead. Lewis probably grateful to come away from the cameras with a point after this defensive mix-up. Darford were the next visitors to the Hampshire club, and the home side once again found themselves in front via on loan AFC Wimbledon striker Delano Samuel. But Basingstoke didn't have the lead for much longer. The Dragons lead lasting just three minutes, a classy finish by the Darford winger. Failing to clear their defensive lines once again cost Basingstoke here. Danny Harris eventually prodding the ball home for Darford to the despair of the Camrose faithful. But there was another twist in what was an enthralling first half. Sam York superbly grabbing his second with this solo effort. The AFC Wimbledon only doubling his tally. What first half we've had here. And Basingstoke came within a foot of the post of nicking this one. This near miss perhaps summing up Basingstoke's frustrating season. Nevertheless, a respectable 13th place for Frank Gray's side. Winchester City's absence from the Zamoretto South and West Division entered its second season, with City well placed to challenge for the league title. Mikey Smith looks at their charge for promotion. A tale of what might have been for Winchester City. Winchester in three semi-finals and leading the division at one point in the season, but it was destined for disappointment. And this disappointment would have been felt away at Paul Town in October, City slumping to a 1-0 defeat. City appeared to be out of the title race completely when they lost away a game, this time at Bournemouth Poppies. But Guy Butters' men rallied and resurrected their season with a stunning comeback away at Haylington. Denny Burney grabbed the second for Hayling before Nathan Lynch tapped in for City after a scramble. It was perhaps the luckiest goal of Winchester's season that brought the sides level. Danny King's cross-come shot evading everyone. And 
Winchester found themselves a late winner, Glasgow stabbing home to secure all three points. And Glasgow was in amongst the goals again when City hosted Braiding Town. But City were pegged back again by this wonder goal by Justin Henderson. Martin Beck put City back in front before the break with this neat finish. But Carl Laurent levelled late on to deny City another victory, but it wasn't long before they were back to winning ways. The Snape and Lynch shot was the highlight of their thumping 4-1 victory away at Brockenhurst. And the good form continued when Bermond's and Heath Carl visited the Denver. former England schoolboy has made the break through his championship six Next up was Newport away, where Dub Rowe treated us all to a wonder goal. He takes a doubt and it's in! What a goal by Winchester City, 1-0 after 26 minutes. But it wasn't all plain sailing on the island. Lee Mills, though, saved the day for City. Arguably the most exciting home game in the season came in all the visitor to Den Blanc. Winchester led 2-0 at one point in this one, but also fought back superbly. Dean Cole levelled the score at 2-2 before Donaldson made it 3-2. He heads it, but it falls to Donaldson, his second of the game, and who would have put money on that combat from the town? The inform Lee Mills levelled the score shortly after, before Glasgow headed home the winner. And it's Mills, it's 3-3, an excellent finish from the former top of man. When Ferran visited the Den Plan, City took control again. They're headed down, oh and it's in, it's Mike Dixon, Winchester have the lead here. Ferran fought back in the second half though. Oh, and Thompson gets there first. Goal for the away side. They've drawn level. But once again it was Glasgow who put City in front. Before Gary Ford completed the Glass scoring, ball, leaving the City top. The Bottom left hand corner. That's free for Winchester. Winchester's nine match on beat and league run ended at the expense of Paul Town. A Lee Mills own goal put Paul Town in control. Before Thomas Jeffs completed the scoring, a City's slim title hope slipped away, and Bemington Heath Harlequins eventually took the runners up position as Winchester finished third. With local teams competing in several cups and competitions, Will Cooper sees if any could reap the rewards of a cup run. With the FA Cup and Vars proving non-starters for Winchester City, their biggest cup competition was the Hampshire Senior Cup, but Giants haven't done more for Louisville. Winchester got to the quarter-finals after wins against Moneyfields, Hailing United and Fleet Town, and produced a resounding display to produce one of the biggest cup upsets of the year. The semi-finals saw an end to the run. Pass back to Michael Charles. Yeah! 1-0 to AFC Tottenham. Local rivals AFC Tottenham producing a dominant display to reach the final Still against Sholi. Left foot drive, bottom corner, 2-0 to Tottenham. Charles is 3-0 to the away side. Great finish by Michael Charles, the former Woking man. The game ended 3-1, with Winchester falling at one of the final hurdles. The FA Trophy saw easily start with a hard-fought victory over Folkestone and Victor. Gillespie with a double to get their trophy run off to a flying start. Folkestone grabbed a stunning late goal with this free kick, but easily saw the game out. The same couldn't be said for Basingstoke, who dropped out of the trophy in the What's first the round proper. The goal for Salisbury, the player manager's put his side in front, it's 1-0. Zamoretto Premier side Salisbury City, it's knocking out the Dragons, Dragons with a, a battling goal. performance. City, the away side are surely out of reach now. Sutton United were next in the trophy for Eastleigh. Fantastic save again, third chance, they've done that! It's there! And Sutton had a third time of asking, taking the lead. And the ball's whipped in for Taggart! 1-1! It's a goal for Eastleigh, it's a goal for Taggart, and is this game now heading for a replay? The Spitfires left it worryingly late to equalise, but 
But after winning the replay, they face Chase Town with a shot at the quarterfinals at stake. He's continued his run. He's ran Matthews. Oh, and what a finish that is. And it's Eastley Town nil, Chase Town 1. Witten for Sabah. Eastley got their equaliser, and that's a real centre forward goal for Jamie Slabber. Chase Town added Eastley to a long line of FA Trophy shock results as they romped to victory. Devon's onside and it's three. And surely now Chase Town have claimed another FA Trophy scout. The Wessex League Cup was Winchester's best chance of silverware this season and a quick fire 3-1 win at East Cows Victoria showed the team's desire to get far in the competition. In the semi-finals, 10-man Winchester battled back from a goal down to gain the lead against Hamble Association at Little Testwood Park. But it was just five minutes from time when Hamble deservedly equalised with this stunning strike. In the penalty shootout, it was Matt Troon who had to score for Hamble, his miss meaning Winchester went through. The final was a different affair. Jesse Hodgson scoring for Bournemouth Poppies after a defensive mix-up at the Winchester back line. City's own Danny King thought he had pulled the game level, but his effort was deemed offside, and Winchester's last chance of silverware this season was gone. And now over to Amy, who is looking at the final league tables. Thanks, Michael. Braintree Town ran away with the season in the Blue Square South, finishing seven points above Farnborough, who themselves lost to Ebbsfleet United 4-2 in the playoff final. Eastley missed out on the playoff place by just three points after some poor end-of-season form, and Basingstoke Town improved on last season's league position, finishing 13th. St Albans, Lewis and Thurrock were all relegated after poor seasons. After topping the table the majority of the season, Winchester failed to finish the year as champions, as late season form resulted in Guy Butter's side finishing third behind Paul Town and Bemerton Heath. The Citizens finished 21 points behind Paul. And in the Zamoretto South and West, AFC Totten finally gained promotion by beating Scholing to the top of the league in an end of season finale. Totten won their last match 1-0 away to Gosport Borough to secure promotion to the Zamoretto Premier. Scholing made the playoff final but fell to a 1-0 defeat to Frome Town, meaning another year in the South and West Division for the Boatmen. And that's your final table roundup. Back to you, Michael. That's all from Sports Week this season, but we return next season with coverage of all your local teams. And we leave you with our goals of the season. Goodbye. <laughs>